न्यूज सर्विसेज डिविजन ऑफ ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी हियर वी ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट डेवलपमेंट्स फ्रॉम इंडिया अनएक्सप्लोर्ड नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन एट द वेरी आउटसेट we talk about some of the padma awardees from the northeast nuno sori a tribal loin loom weaver famously recognized as nagaland's master weaver was awarded with padma shri 2023 in the field of art she received her award from president draupadi murmu at a civil investiture ceremony at rashtrapati bhavan on 22nd of march 2023 we have a report New New Sore is a master craftsperson in the field of weaving, knitting, beadwork, making decorative items and dry flowers. Sore lives in Kohima district and is from the Angami community. She was born in 1963 and learned the art of weaving from her mother at the age of 4. She has been conducting training for local artisans and has so far trained over 300 people in loom loom weaving. Knitting and beadwork. She is a two-time recipient of National Handloom Award in 2007 and 2022 for her artworks. Sore is also a recipient of the San Kabir Award, an Indian government award conferred to outstanding weavers who have made valuable contribution in keeping handloom heritage alive. She also received the award to Master Craftsman from the government of Nagaland in 2001. She has also participated in over 120 major exhibition trade fairs and melas across India and represented India in foreign countries along with so rare musician Mosubong an eminent folk fusion artist was also nominated for the Padma Shri 2023 for notice diary this is Afanyo from AIR News Kohima The center has honored Bikram Bahadur Jamatia a veteran social activist from Tripura with the prestigious Padma Shri award Mr Jamatia who devoted his life in social work was instrumental in driving away the insurgent groups in Tripura known as All Tripura Tiger Force and National Liberation Front of Tripura which had wreaked havoc in the north eastern state in mid 90s and early 2000 a report Individuals who bring about change in the lives of people do not necessarily come from big towns and cities. There are some who spend their entire life in villages but play a positive role in the society. A little over an hour's drive from the capital city of Agartala, taking stroll in his courtyard in a sleepy village of Duski is one such individual, Bikram Bahadur Jamatia, a prominent figure from the northeastern state of Tripura. Mr Jamatia who comes from one of the 19 tribal communities of Tripura played a pivotal role when he was a youth taking note of the benefits of reservation for the people from scheduled castes and scheduled tribes not reaching to the employees in the Tripura state government he brought individuals from these communities together and forced the government to enact a law in 1989 Mr Jamatia himself reaped the benefits of reservation policy as he climbed the ladder of promotion from lower division assistant to the under secretary level in the Tripura government after his superannuation in the year 1997 he was made the okra meaning head of his community during those times the local insurgent groups called as all tripura tiger force attf and the national liberation front of tripura nlft had been wreaking havoc in this northeastern state under the false promise of independent tripura Although the ATTF and NLFT were two separate groups but their style of functioning was more or less similar not only taking shelter at the houses of people the members of these insurgent groups even took away ration and even forced individuals to convert from one faith to another appalled by the operation inflicted by the ATTF and NLFT Mr Jamatia staged revolt against the extremist and brought like-minded people together who worked as volunteers he also approached the people in upper echelons of power in new delhi like the then prime minister late atal bihari vajpayee and deputy prime minister l k advani the central government too provided him due assistance in his endeavor as he was provided the security cover from the tripura state rifles and the central armed police force besides his 400 volunteers 
who confronted and drove away the militias in the early 2000. If one would feel that at 86 years old, Mr. Jamatia must have achieved all the dreams in his life, then you are wrong. He says that one dream which still has not been accomplished is that of enactment of customary laws for all 19 tribal communities in the state of Tripura. Mr. Jamatia's heroic tale will certainly inspire youth not only from his community but the young generation from other parts of the country as well. Kunal Shinde for Northeast Diary from Agartala. Hemo Prabha Sutia, who is a handloom artist from Dibrugad district of Assam, was also awarded the Padma Shri. She weaved the Bhagavad Gita on cloth. Hem Chandra Goswami, an artist from Majuli, was also awarded the honor. He is known for preparing masks. Ram Kui Wangbe Zeme, a social worker from Dima Hasau district, has also been awarded the Padma Shri. He is known as the hero of Heraka. Lamba Safar hai. 40 नाइन इयर्स हो गया ग्रेजुएशन दिखाने के साथ साथ समाज का काम में लगा 1974-75 से तो लगातार चला फर्स्ट तो जलंगरो हराका एसोसिएशन का जो रानी माँ ने स्थापना किया उनका फाउंडर सेक्रेटरी हिसाब से काम किया और साथ साथ बीस एंटी परिषद का वर्कर हिसाब से भी चला चलते ही चलते ही मैं नाइनटीन उसमें रानी माँ गाइडिन ने उनके पीए के लिए बुलाया कोहिमा में तो वहाँ करीब डेढ़ साल से काम किया बाद में फिर समाज के लोग यहाँ के लोग आसाम के लोग बुलाया नहीं आपको तो लगेगा यहाँ काम करने के लिए तो फिर वापस आया उसके बाद तो साल काम करा समाज का काम और उसके बाद फिर काउंसिल से सब इंस्पेक्टर स्कूल का नियुक्ति किया वो कुछ साल काम किया लेकिन जो सब इंस्पेक्टर स्कूल आए गाँव गाँव में जाता है तो देखने मिला है स्कूल में केवल लड़का लोग पढ़ता है लड़की नहीं है तो मैंने पूछा क्यों लड़की नहीं देता एक साथ समान से पढ़ना है गांव वाला बोलता है नहीं लड़की को कैसा होगा लड़की तो शादी करेगा मरद पे घर में चल जाएगा तो हमारा क्या लाभ होगा वो चल जाएगा इसके लिए लड़की जब तक घर में है माँ बाप को सेवा करना बहुत जरूरी है इसके लिए हम लोग स्कूल में नहीं भेजता है तो मैंने तो समझाया कन्विंस किया बात में दो साल तीन साल लगा हमको कन्विंस करने बाद में तो सब लड़की लोगों को देने शुरू कर दिया तो ऐसे ही शिक्षा का क्षेत्र में मैंने ऐसे काम किया 2011 में रिटायर हुआ तो अभी भी वैसे ही चलता काम खत्म नहीं हुआ पहला बार जन कल्याण समिति करके महाराष्ट्र पुणे में एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है तो उन लोग ने एक अवार्ड दिया गुरु जी अवार्ड गुरु जी अवार्ड मुंबई में दिया uh, 1997 में उसके बाद फिर आपको भौरव देवराज समिति के में एक फिर दिया पुरस्कार तो वो था uh, आपको यूपी में एक अवार्ड uh, मिला 2010 में उसके बाद फिर uh, 2015 में uh, विवेकानंद केंद्र इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कल्चर वहां से भी एक पुरस्कार दिया 2018 में डॉक्टर कौसा डॉक्टरेट टाइटल दिया था वो नीचे यूनिवर्सिटी और बेंगलुरु कर्नाटक वहाँ से दिया है तो ऐसे करके अवार्ड तो संस्था से तो बहुत दिया है इसे प्रेस्टिगियस अवार्ड के लिए चुना गया इसलिए मैं बहुत खुश हूँ आभारी हूँ उनका और सरकार को खास करके मोदी सरकार को मैं धन्यवाद देता हूँ क्योंकि मोदी की सरकार आज तो कुना कुना में गांव गांव में नॉर्थ ईस्ट में भी अभी काम शुरू किया बहुत अच्छा लगा समाज का काम करने से पूर्ति होता है मन में शांति मिलता है एंड नाउ वी हैव टू सिक्किम टू लर्न अबाउट अ यूनिक कल्चरल एक्सचेंज प्रोग्राम व्हिच हैज टर्न आउट टू बी अ ट्रीट फॉर द म्यूजिक लवर्स ऑफ द रीजन द पाक्यो म्यूजिक इंस्टीट्यूट एंड द सिक्किम कल्चर डिपार्टमेंट ब्रॉड टूगेदर एन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल अमेरिकन ब्लू ग्रास थ्रू ए कल्चरल एक्सचेंज प्रोग्राम a music workshop and enthralling performances for students and music lovers in Sikkim members of the bluegrass journeymen perform in different bands back home bringing original tunes and knowledge of bluegrass songs 
The performing collective's lead, Patrick Fitzsimmons, shares their musical outreach and experience in India. The idea was to uh, take bluegrass music and uh, introduce it to India and kind of spread our, uh, our musical ideas and our culture to an Indian audience. And ever since then, it's kind of changed to become a sort of a fusion music, incorporating uh, Bengali folk tunes, ragas, jazz, folk, rock and roll, all kinds of different stuff. It's been great of different bluegrass musicians from America coming in and and kind of getting a taste of Indian music and, and culture and it uh, it's really helped to uh, to foster a lot of musical connections over the years. We did a week long workshop at a school outside of Kolkata called Piali Asharalo, the girls school, and uh, we were there for about a week just teaching basic songs and we had a, a guitar teacher and another mandolin there teacher there too. And uh, Navanita was was helping to um, to teach uh, some of the the Bengali songs, and, and we taught him a few bluegrass tunes, also. And uh, so yeah, so we're we're trying to uh, accelerate the educational aspect. Another member of the Bluegrass Journeyman, Nabanita Sarkar, shares her experience with the band and the collective's cross-cultural musical collaborations with local folk musicians. My name is Nabanita Sarkar. I'm based out of Kolkata. I'm a musician, a lawyer, and a part-time paravet. I do a lot of things back home, and I also enjoy playing music most of the time. So I have been a part of the Bluegrass Journeyman since 2017 when I met them in Kolkata and then I started touring with them. Um, we have been conducting workshops since then, since 2018, in various parts of India, including Delhi, Chandigarh, South India, Chennai, Kolkata, and right now we are in Sikkim, and we are teaching kids bluegrass music, we are teaching them bluegrass, like ukulele, and like vocals, and I am teaching them like Bengali songs too, and and bluegrass songs mainly and kids have been inspired so much like just picking up ukulele for the first time and learning so quickly so kids are really eager and I'm happy how bluegrass has been spreading across the country and it's like being as far as blues and jazz and people are really liking and connecting with it I am a trained classical musician I have been singing Indian classical music all my life and then I shifted genre to a western music. So I have been trying to incorporate a lot of rap and, uh, and just simple traditional folk songs of Bengal and, and other parts of India into bluegrass. And that's how like everyone of us, like our collective is of many people who come from many different backgrounds. So it's been just an experience of sharing music from all parts of the world. And that's what we've been also trying to like teach kids and just explore a different side of music altogether. School students from Pakyong district participated in a music workshop led by members of the Bluegrass Journeyman. Besides imparting music lessons, the members also introduced and presented music instruments to students. The workshop was aimed to promote fresh art and music create bonding among the young sections of society and to understand their views of present day society. Saikat Sarkar for AI News, Sikkim. The Nehru Yuva Kendra under the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports has been making a macro outreach program, namely Yuva Utsav as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebration. This initiative of NYK or Nehru Yuva Kendra aims to rekindle the spirit of patriotism and values of India's freedom struggle by engaging the youth in various events from district level to state and national levels. Recently, Yuva Utsavs were organized by Nehru Yuva Kendra in five districts of Mizoram. They created enormous enthusiasm among the students and youths and drew their huge participation. A report. The students and youths of Mizoram have recently witnessed a unique youth festival named as 
Yuva Utsav, where the students from university and colleges have extended all-out support to the Nehru Yuva Kendra, making this program a success. In the last week, this youth festival were organized in five districts of Aizol, Siaha, Tampai, Sertib and Mamit. These programs were held on the theme of Panch Pran of Amritkal, India at 2047. In Yuva Utsav, held at Mizoram University, a bouquet of cultural activities were organized by the students of the university, whereas different banks and the Central Bureau of Communication under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting put up exhibition stalls. Professor Prabhakar Rath said that the Yuva Utsa seeks to unite people in the country bringing different cultures together and instill an impact on youth towards making a developed nation. Third year student of Mizoram University shared her thoughts about the positive impact of the Yuva Utsa. The NYK Yuva Utsa program is being held here at the NZU Auditorium today. And the students here are so grateful, we are so grateful and so thankful that the government is organizing this program, uh, giving importance to our heritage and educating the students more on the freedom struggle of India. Enthusiastic students participating in Yuva Utsav events at government colleges in Siaha, Tampai and Sethib also express their aspirations and pleasure. The NYK Yuva Utsam is being held for the first time in Kasmian Sertip College. As a woman of culture, it's such an immense pleasure to have opportunity to experience this wonderful event. Our heartfelt thanks to the central government of India for blending cultures and education. This youth festival is also a part of our education, as it gives us the opportunity to plant and showcase our talents by using different conditions like painting, poetry, writing, etc. I'm very grateful to attend the youth festival and giving us the youth an opportunity to showcase our talents and personalities. And I look on to the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports to organize more of like this in the future. Deputy Director of NYK, Mary Selate, said to rekindle the spirit of patriotism and values of India's freedom struggle, these events engaged youth in participatory programs such as Talent Hunt and several departments put up exhibition displaying cultural ethos of the country. For Northeast Diary with Subhashis Chanda, this is Irene from Aizol. Over a hundred delegates from G20 member countries, guest countries and international organizations visited Arunachal Pradesh last Saturday. They did so after attending the G20 Research and Innovation Initiative Gathering Conference in Dibrugarh, Assam. A report from our Itanagar correspondent. India's historic G20 presidency this year has not only given India the opportunity to show the world its positions and the role in the world politics, but also has given a great platform to showcase its rich cultural diversity. On Saturday last week, over 100 delegates from G20 member countries, guest countries and international organizations which had attended the G20 Research and Innovation Initiative gathering, the RIC conference in Dibrugar, Assam, visited Itanagar and witnessed the colorful exhibitions of the tribal cultures in the state. It is to be mentioned that Arunachal Pradesh has 26 major tribes and over 100 such tribes with their own distinct cultural identity and dialects. Some of the tribes in the state presented their traditional arts and crafts, attire and cuisine in the exhibition. Talking to AIR about the cultural presentations on the occasion, Valeria, a delegate representing Russian federations in a conference meeting, says that it's an opportunity for her to get to know about the diversity of India. My name is Valeria. 
Kuderenka. I'm from Russian Federation. The experience was really um, amazing. <laughs> I can say some, something like this because it was full of um, events, full of uh, culture. In fact, we are really surprised by this fact because it's a good chance to see not only capital of India but also uh, some other cities, some other regions to know more about culture, about its uh, diversity. It's very nice and uh, we really uh, highly appreciate it and we can understand it because in Russia we have also many, many regions, different culture and uh, it's very similar to us. Julian, delegate from Germany, says that being to Itanagar and the kind of receptions and cultural display he has experienced here is one of the best things of his life. I'm Julian and I'm from Germany. It's amazing, you know. Um, for me it's not real because it's far away from my, from my culture. But I really love how you show your culture and you can be proud of your culture and it's such a nice experience for me. It's one of the best things I imagine in my life. What kind of outcome are you expecting from the G20 rich experience? Um, yeah, we hope that we can work together more strongly in the world to, to solve the global issues. You only can work together. Everybody is dependent on each other. And we like the slogan you are, like India, the slogan India is using, it's like this. You know, it's one world, one earth, one family. So. And it's a nice meeting. The people here, here they are open-minded to each culture and it's such a nice experience. And I hope that the whole societies can, can adapt. The G20 rig delegations also visited some of the tourist spots in the city before leaving the next day. For Norris Diary, this is Rakesh Jole, AI News, Itanagar. And now we bring to you an interview with Richard Asoso, who is the Chief Marketing Officer and PRO of a Kohima-based IT firm. And the topic of the interaction is launch of e-police application. And the interviewer is Ivo. Dear listeners, today we have here with us Mr. Richard Asoso. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Richard. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. First of all, can you introduce e-police application to the listeners? We recently launched the e-police app for the Commissionate of Police Office in Timapu. And this was an initiative of uh, some of the young officers who are working under CP Dimapu and essentially the concept for this app started with the need to manage records more efficiently. So in the first phase of the e-police app, the records which are going to be managed includes non-bailable warrants, arrests made, arms seizures and also non-FIR cases. So with this app, the police stations, they will be able to manage all these records which I mentioned in digital format, which will definitely make their job a lot more easier, a lot more efficient. And, you know, the retrieval of such records would also be much quicker and, you know, save a lot of time and help in improving the efficiency of the police. So here you mean it will be only be applicable to the police? Since this has to do with very sensitive data, which includes, you know, investigation cases, and therefore only authorized police users will be able to access this app. Talking more about the application, can you tell us what are its functionalities, modules, and the kind of services the application provides? Yes, so in terms of the different features available, there will be a dashboard, which will contain a graphical representation of the different reports and data that have been fed into the system. And the respective police stations, they will be able to do data entry of the different kinds of cases, the different kinds of records that come to their police stations, which includes the non-bailable warrants, the non-FIRs, the arms seized, and other kinds of seizures. Also, for the higher-ups, you know, the supervisors, they will be able to have access to consolidated reports of all the police stations, or if they want to look at a particular police station, uh, they will be able to pull out the specific record or report for that particular police station, and then this will save a lot of time. And also, there are other features like system settings, user module, 
wherein different kinds of users can be added and uh, user permissions as well. So there will be uh, there are many police stations across Dimapur also. So the respective police stations they will have access to only their police station records and data. And while the commissioner of police, since it's the central agency for Dimapur police. Uh, they will have access to all the police stations, but the individual police stations uh, will have access to only their records. Talking about the application, can you tell us what are its main aims and objectives? The intention of the concerned and visionary police officers who initiated this, the main idea was to kickstart this and you know leverage the use of this particular app so that in future more and more similar applications can be developed which will help the police. So in a nutshell I would say the objective of this app is to contribute towards in a in a small way towards e governance of in this case uh, the police department. How long does it take to build an app like this e police app? The e-police app, we developed it in a time frame of about two months. So the duration, again, it depends on the complexity of the app. Mm -hmm. So some apps, we will probably be able to deliver it within two to three weeks, or some within one month, some two months. And, you know, if the complexity and functionalities of the app increases, then, you know, it can go up to six months or one year also. I would want to take this opportunity to thank the Nagaland Police in general and in particular the Commissioner of Police Dimapur for giving us this opportunity to work on this transformative application which we envision and which our collective vision is to improve the working of the police department, especially the Commissioner of Police and all the police stations under it. So a big vote of thanks to the C.P. Dimapur and his team for giving us this opportunity. The message that I want to send is it's not only government jobs that are a good career opportunities. There are lots of opportunities in the private sector as well. And there are lots of opportunities if you want to start your own new business as well. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Richard, for the fast insight on the e-police application as well as the need for us, the youth, to venture in this technology and related firms. I'm sure the listeners are going to be benefited much from what you have said. Thank you very much. We just heard an interview with Richard Asoso, who is the Chief Marketing Officer and PRO of a Kohima-based IT firm, and the topic of the interaction was launch of e-police application. And now Northeast Diary. Do join us next week to hear more stories from this enchanting part of India. Bye bye.
پروگرام واز پریزنٹیڈ بائی انوجا کمار اسکرپٹیڈ بائی سپرنا سائکیا پروڈیوس بائی شرملا گوسوامی اینڈ اسسٹیڈ بائی کمار گورو اٹ واز براٹ ٹو یو بائی دا نیو سروسز ڈویژن آف آل انڈیا ریڈیو